shocked at least 58 people now dead, more than 500 people wounded in a horrific shooting on the Las Vegas Strip. A second mass shooting in the United States in less than 24 hours. We're averaging about 300 mass shootings a year. No other country comes close. So yes, this is up. It's painful to say it, but mass shootings are commonplace in the United States today. It's no longer surprising to hear about a mass shooting in El Paso and 13 hours later hear about one in Dayton, Ohio. The idea that people in America have to worry about their safety in public upsets all Americans on all sides of the political spectrum. Where we disagree is how to fix it. Some want to remove all guns and some want to add more guns. Some think that superficial background checks cause mass shootings. Others think that mental health issues cause mass shootings. And some think that video games cause mass shootings. And also video games. I'm hearing more and more people say the level of violence on video games is really shaping young people's thoughts. That's what this video focuses on. This includes the gruesome and grisly video games that are now commonplace. It is too easy today for troubled youth to surround themselves with a culture that celebrates violence. Future videos may focus on other aspects of mass shootings, such as mental health issues. But in this video, I aim to analyze the points of view on both sides of the argument regarding video game violence. Do violent video games cause violent behavior? That's for you to decide after I unpack the arguments for you. Welcome to Learn Something on the Issues. Before we look at the violence in video games, let's look at the gaming industry as a whole. The video game industry is one of the fastest growing industries in the world. Activision Blizzard up 19%, Ubisoft up over 50%. Now the gaming industry has grown faster than anyone could have ever imagined. It is now a $139 billion a year business. In terms of revenue, that's bigger than worldwide box office, music streaming and album sales, the NFL, the NBA, MLB, and the NHL combined. People of all ages are playing video games, and they're playing a lot of them. As of March of 2019, Fortnite holds the record for the most concurrent players. 10.8 million played at one time, with an overall player base of 250 million people. Grand Theft Auto V is the most profitable entertainment product of all time, including movies, music, and books, grossing over $6 billion in sales as of April of 2018. To compare, the highest grossing film in history is Avengers Endgame, We're in the Endgame now. which only pulled in $2.7 billion. In fact, combining Endgame and Avatar, the second highest grossing film, doesn't even reach $6 billion. Here's the kicker though. Grand Theft Auto V and other games are full of violent content. Everything from violent depictions of torture... Oh, that wasn't so tough, was it? to killing cops, to drug deals, what the f Man, that's drywall. Hey, we got some buyer's remorse out here. Beyond GTA, a good portion of the most played video games have some kind of shooting component. Call of Duty, Fortnite, Minecraft, well, kinda. But does that matter? Many people say it does matter, especially because minors are possibly the largest consumer base for these games. The ESRB, Entertainment Software Ratings Board, assigns age ratings to games, and M-rated games are described as only suitable for those 17 years old and older. Rated M for mature. But that doesn't stop minors from getting their hands on them. Myself included, I've played violent video games since I was 12 years old. What do you mean when they say violence? When they say it's violent, it's not really violent. They're just trying to get you not to play it. The Journal of School Violence conducted a study that concluded that middle schoolers who play M-rated games are more likely to exhibit aggressive behavior or even bully and cyberbully their peers. However, critics say that studies like this one are failing to consider other factors such as the child's upbringing, family history, and other issues. These critics include the justices of the Supreme Court. In a 7-2 decision in 2011, with Justices Clarence Thomas and Stephen Breyer being the only dissenters, the Supreme Court ruled that a California law that banned the sale of violent video games to minors was unconstitutional. California asked this court to adopt a rule of law that permits states to restrict minors' ability to purchase, 
deviant, violent video games. Why just video games? Why not movies, for example, as well? Sure, Your Honor. The California legislature was presented with substantial evidence that demonstrates that the interactive nature of violent, of violent video games where the minor or the young adult is the aggressor, is the, is the individual acting out this, this obscene level of violence, if you will, um, is especially harmful to minors. One of the studies, the Anderson study, says that the effect of violence is the same for a Bugs Bunny episode as it is for a violent video. So can the legislature now, because it has that study, say we can outlaw Bugs Bunny? No. And there are people who would say that a cartoon has very little social value. It's entertainment, but not much else. In the majority opinion, Justice Antonin Scalia stated the following. In truth, the California Act is the latest in a long series of failed attempts to censor violent entertainment for minors. Before video games came cheap novels depicting crime, motion pictures, comic books, television, and music lyrics, all of which were blamed by some for juvenile delinquency. California has not demonstrated any direct causal link between playing violent video games and actual harm to minors. Rather, the state relies on a number of studies showing, at best, some correlation between exposure to violent entertainment and minuscule real-world effects, such as children's feeling more aggressive or making louder noises in the few minutes after playing a violent game. That's another funny thing about this issue. You can't really determine a person's stance on the issue based on their ideology. Clarence Thomas and Stephen Breyer are considered by some to be the most conservative and most liberal justices on the Supreme Court, respectively. President Trump often voices his concerns about violent video games in society, and in 2005, so did Hillary Clinton. We need to treat violent video games the way we treat tobacco, alcohol, and pornography. It's almost routine in popular games for players to spray other people with Uzis, to drive over pedestrians, to kill police officers using top-of-the-line graphics in stunningly realistic detail. As a result, in Grand Theft Auto 4, Clinton's face is satirically used on the in-game Statue of Liberty. Some people think that maybe video games don't cause violence, but they definitely desensitize players to violence. Uh, as, the, as the rate of violent video game playing has gone up, the rate of juvenile crime has gone down. Now, would I let my kids play this? No, because I think that it does desensitize to violence. I think that it is immoral to, to get a thrill from even fake killing innocent people, as you see in some of these situations. One undeniable fact is that mass shooters play video games. The video games causing violence argument primarily started in 1999 after the Columbine High School massacre. Eric Harris, one of the gunmen in the shooting, was an avid fan of the Doom franchise. He created several fan-made levels in Doom 2, now known as the Harris Levels. Harris allegedly recreated Columbine High School in a Doom level before the shooting, although none of the levels he released resemble a school. He would talk about the game on tape prior to the massacre, as seen in this recreation of one of the tapes using a real transcript. It's gonna be like Doom, man. Once the bombs go off, just tick, tick, tick. Mm, that shotgun, baby, straight out of Doom. Go ahead and change gun laws. How do you think we got ours? And it wasn't just Columbine. The perpetrator of the 2011 shootings in Norway that left 77 killed wrote in his 1,500-page manifesto that he more than casually played Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. He even stated that, quote, I see Modern Warfare 2 more as part of my training simulation than anything else. And he spent a year training on video games to prepare himself for his crime. The killer at, uh, in Florida, he, he spent 15 hours a day on violent video games. The most all-consuming, all-pervasive thing in this guy's life are these violent video games. But here's the thing. The demographic that most often commits mass shootings is the young male demographic. And the demographic that plays video games is disproportionately young and male. It would be more statistically shocking if mass shooters didn't play video games. One of the mass shooters often referenced when talking about the effect of video games on the brain is Adam Lanza, perpetrator of the Sandy Hook Elementary School massacre. He was obsessed with video games according to the media. And upon further investigation, they were right. His game of choice? Dance Dance Revolution. I mean, I was expecting Mortal Kombat, Call of Duty, GTA, but Dance Dance Revolution. Maybe it's not violent video games that cause real life violence, but just video games in general. 
One argument is that video games cause addiction, which causes other mental health issues, which can foster real life violence. Video game addiction is absolutely a real thing. You hear about people quitting their jobs and living in their mom's basement for the rest of their lives all the time. But does it cause violence? In 2007, Daniel Petrick, an Ohio 16-year-old, shot both of his parents, killing his mother and severely injuring his father after his father took away his copy of Halo 3, a game that he was said to sometimes play for 18 hours straight without a break. The Lorain County judge stated that, quote, I firmly believe that Daniel Petrick had no idea at the time he hatched this plot that if he killed his parents, they would be dead forever. It is hard to go see him in prison. It's very difficult. When he could have had such a life ahead of him, To finish up, I'll point out that we're looking at a lot of anecdotes. Eric Harris, Adam Lanza, Daniel Petrick, they all acted violently and were avid gamers. Did the video games cause them to act violently? Taking these individual examples and applying them to all gamers is risky at best. I'm not going to say that video games cause violence. There would have to be a more conclusive study that proves a causal link between playing video games and violent behavior. There just isn't enough data right now to make that conclusion. But that conclusion is not out of the realm of possibility after further testing. For now though, I'll leave you with this. The only thing that is for sure right now is that the decision is up to the parents. Parents must decide whether or not they want their child to play violent video games. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.